Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to start. I want to respect your time, and I also know we only have a half hour, and I feel like I could probably talk about Google Keep for like three days straight if I had to, so let's uh, keep me reined into our half hour that we go. I'm glad you're here to join me today for our Learning at Lunch webinar, where we'll focus today on Google Keep as a tool to support everyone for all kinds of tasks, and we'll talk about that in a second. But again, I'm glad you're here. My name is Mike Murata. Uh, I will be our presenter today as, as well as the director of the Richard West Assistive Technology Advocacy Center, who is hosting our webinar today. And there's all my contact information. Feel free to reach out uh, after we're done today. If you have any questions or concerns, shoot me an email, follow me on Twitter, follow ATAC on Twitter. Uh, if you want to be kept up to date on assistive technology supports that are out there. Uh, we post a lot of stuff up there, so hopefully you will connect with us. We do have a chat window if you're interested in throwing questions out as we go. And again, in a half hour, we're probably not going to get very deep into any one area of this topic, but we'll do kind of a broad stroke. Uh, across the top of a, a wide net to show you all the different things that Google Keep can do. But if you have specific questions, throw them in the chat. And as I go through, I will see them pop up over here and I will make sure to address them. I see your question and I know something is coming up that we're going to address that. I will wait. I won't answer it then. But don't panic. I'm not ignoring your question. Uh, I just think it probably fit somewhere coming up. Definitely feel free. Chime in at will, I would love to hear from you as we go. So as we dive in, you know, we'll start with the basic question, what the heck is Google Keep? And if I had to give you a simple answer on what is Google Keep, it's maybe the best part of the entire G Suite. Um, it's also probably the tool that many people are not using. And that's always frustrating to me uh, because it is such a powerful tool and it's already there. Uh, you have it. It's part of your Google account. If you have a Google account, it's in there. It's just waiting for you. You could probably go to it right now. And if you're not using Keep, there's nothing there, um, but it's certainly set up and ready to go. And when I think about it, I'm a post-it note lover. Uh, I have several of them jammed in my pocket right now. Um, the idea of organizing, making notes, to-dos, task reminders, all of these great things for time management. And really, when we think about Google Keep, it is an electronic version of that tool. So that's really what we're talking about, what it looks like. Here's some of the things you could do. Um, some of the areas of need that could be addressed with Google Keep. It could be a note-taking support. Um, it could be a tool for organization or time management. It could be a research tool. I have some students that I support that are using it as a research tool, and I'll talk about that as we come up to that part um, in the slides. Uh, also for to-do lists, uh, you can use it as for that as well, and so much more. Uh, I think those are some kind of general ideas um, of what people use Google Keep for. Um, if you use it for something else, feel free, throw it in the chat window, and we'll, we'll bring it down into the conversation. I think it's, it's always nice. I, I, I know there must be somebody using it in a different way than I am. So I always like to hear that for sure. So feel free, to drop that in. So as we continue on, let's let's explore the features of it. So what we'll do is I will go through and I will kind of flip back and forth. So I think that's kind of the strategy I'm gonna use as we go through this, is I'm gonna flip back and forth between the slides and my Google Keep, just so that you can kind of see what it looks like as it's working. So I'll show you the example, or we'll talk about the example on a slide and then I'll, I'll pop over and we can play with that in Keep as we go. Um, and so first up, again, it's a Google tool. So what does that mean? It means it works everywhere. You're logging into it, it comes and finds you everywhere you are, whether you're on a computer and browser, you're on a mobile device of any kind. You can be on an Android device, an iOS device, a Chromebook, a Mac, a PC, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will find you there as an app for it. And if you're on a computer in a browser, you can go to keep.google.com and it will pop up automatically. It may ask you to log into it if you're not logged in already. Uh, but once you're logged in, all of your notes will sync across those devices. So again, we think about the power of this as an assistive technology tool. It becomes a support for the individual wherever they are. 
they could leave themselves a note on their phone and then when they get home that same note shows up on their computer uh, happens simultaneously the things automatically sync and your information lives in multiple spots so so to me i'm a, a big fan of any tool that works cross-platform uh, so it doesn't matter what kind of phone I have. If I'm going out to work with someone, it doesn't matter what kind of phone they have. It doesn't matter what kind of computer they have. It will work the same. It will basically look the same on every device. So if you're in a browser on any computer, it will basically look the same. If you're on a mobile device, it's pretty much the same. Uh, there may be a slight difference in how it looks between an iOS and an Android, but ultimately it looks the same. On the left on our slide there, the picture from the browser so that's what it looks like in the browser view the picture on the right shows what it looks like on the mobile device so that's a snapshot of my phone screen just to give you a sense of kind of the difference of how it kind of pulls itself together but when we think about google keep at its core you know what does it do is a note tool you can use it to collect notes and i've just kind of given you some of the big kind of broad features of it um, we think about making notes and creating notes and organizing notes um, you can add pictures you can add color you can label things so that you can find them easily you can create check boxes for to-do lists uh, you can set reminders that go to your calendar that will give you that support of following up and for time management uh, you can add collaborators i mean those are some of the big broad strokes of what it does and if we pop over to it here I am, I'm in Google Keep now. And you'll see I, I, one of the features that I'm a big user of uh, is the idea of color. I do a lot with color just to help me visually organize information as I go through. Um, and so when we think about some of these notes that are here, uh, some of them are pretty basic. Here's one, so I took a picture. So we talk about this idea of features you can use. Picture of something. So this was the book I was reading, took a picture of it, color coded it, added in a note, whatever it was. So this was the uh, note of what I was going to talk about. So I wanted to explore this book um, and I'm going to use this for presentations, which I've already started doing, but it gives you kind of the sense of what this note was doing. Underneath this note in the body of it, you see a couple different things here. You'll see hashtags which were added into the body of the note, which become labels. If you notice that in the body of the note, they are hashtags, it says hashtag coaching and hashtag ATAC. Underneath that is a couple of little buttons. One of them is the reminder. So I set myself a reminder for this to tell me on December 6th at eight o'clock, remember to do this. Uh, and then also the labels popped up underneath as well. So now I have some way to manage this and organize how I see this information, how it shows up to me, um, how I can then go back and track it as I move through it. And so what we end up finding is a really powerful tool to let me do any number of things. And all of that happens from the boxes that show up alongside the bottom, uh, which have, um, I'm fighting with my computer now because you guys aren't seeing it if you can appreciate the zoom toolbar is blocking all of my buttons there we go okay <laughs> sorry about that as some management of the software here uh, but along the bottom of that note you see there are a handful of buttons that that give me some additional functions i have the bell to set the reminder so i can set a reminder date and time so if i want to do that i can set that as i go and I can set that however I'd like it. Set it to repeat, whatever it might be. Um, in addition to reminders being set for days or times, I can also set a place. And this is really powerful for people. If they want to be reminded of something when they get there. Uh, so I know that when I get home, now you know my address that's weird don't come to my house that's weird um but if there's my address so now this note would fire and give me a notification when i got to my house think about that if you're working in a school and you want students to remember when to do things if it's homework 
Well, you don't want that reminder to happen during the day, or if it happens at some time during the night, that might work for them. But how about if it reminds them as soon as they get home, it pops up an automatic notification. Somebody's going to work, and it instantly pops up when they get to their place of employment and tells them what to do. I have these set sometimes when I make notes for myself to go to an appointment that when I get to that location, the reminder pops up to tell me what it is I'm there to do. Uh, so using that in a little creative way um, allows you to have those reminders be a little bit more effective for somebody in the way they provide the information. So that's our reminders. I mentioned before you can collaborate with people. So anyone that's in my anyone that is in my contact list, I can share this note with. And now this note is shared with myself across my two Google accounts. Uh, but now I see this note in my other Google Keep. So if you shared this with someone else, they would see it. You could both interact with this note and change things and, so, and support each other, collaborate on this space without having to do anything else. Again, I, I do a lot of work in schools, so there's this idea that teachers want to share notes with students so that they can follow along with what's happening, or uh, a um, paraprofessional wants to support the student. They can share the notes between themselves, and each of them has access to it. If a family member wants to see the notes that a student is taking in class, the student can share that note with a parent and they can see the same information. So that becomes really, really effective as a way to make sure that this information is getting to who needs it. Everybody has access to it, just like all our other Google tools in real time. Uh, we can change colors, so there's a color palette. I'm just running across some of the bottom here. The ability to add images, you can pull images from your computer, or you could take a picture. So if you're on a mobile device, you can archive notes. And then there's the three dots that give us a whole bunch of other pieces. We're gonna talk about some of them, uh, but look at some, I can change the labels. I can draw or annotate a picture. So if I take a picture of some kind of work, um, right now I'm staring at the um, telephone list of my office. I could take a picture of that. And then in that picture, I could annotate on top of that and highlight and mark up that picture so I could so it could be more effective for me as I go forward. Make a copy of the note, show checks, check boxes. If you look at one of the other notes, let's go to a different one that has check boxes. In this note, I have check boxes. I've made a to-do list. And what's nice about to-do lists in Google Keep um, is as I check them off, they drop down to the completed items part. They don't disappear completely. They just drop down to the completed items. And as I go through, everything will end up down there. So now I've gone through all the steps of my process uh, and completed everything. Well, maybe this is a, a, an activity or a task that I need to do each day. If that's the case, now I've done it all for today, but when I'm done, I can go back in and unclick the boxes and those drop back out as uh, a step-by-step -step task list that I can use. Again, I have this for individuals um, who struggle with the steps of a task. And we're looking at this as, as, as a tool, a visual schedule to keep them independent. I could put the steps in that in the, in the um, Google Keep and they could just click them off as they go then the last step could be uncheck all the boxes and then it brings everybody, every um, one of those options back up into the list for them. Powerful, powerful tool. So j that's just a snapshot of what it does uh, when we think about kind of the broad stroke of how these notes work in Google Keep. And you, you see, it's already 12.50, and I could easily talk all day, but I'm going to force myself to not. Uh, but you look at some of these ways that it's some examples of organizing students. And again, if you're in a school that is Chrome school, this is part of their Chrome account. Why not use it? So the example on the left is from Casey Bell. So if you're not following Casey Bell online, look her up and, and the name of her um, website and what she does is called Shake Up Learning. Um, but that picture on the left is a snapshot of, of something that she shared where it's a lot of checklists for students and it's daily tasks, first period, second period, third period. And so the students can start making these running lists in each period, color coded with pictures to help them manage that. 
and then go through and check things off. There's a list for at home, there's research notes, learning goals, all of those things are organizing their Google Keep in a way that it's allowing them to effectively use it as a tool to keep themselves independent. The picture on the right is an example of something that I was working with a student doing, trying to encourage them as an accommodation to use Google Keep to remind them of homework and remind them of things they needed to do for class. Uh, it's, this was a student who was, as part of their IEP, allowed to take a picture of the board um, to remember their assignments. And as you could imagine, this student would just take a picture in the camera roll and that picture would just live in their camera roll along with every other picture in their camera roll. So instead, we're now taking the picture in Google Keep. The picture shows up there. If color-coded, history for red. So every time there's a history note, it becomes red. They give the title of history. They put the date that they, that this homework is due. So that's how they're managing it. And again, you could manage it different ways. This just happens to be what's working for this student. So they put the date that it's due, some notes about it, and then they tag it. In this case, they're tagging it with history so that they can then do a search in their Google Keep for only notes that relate to history. And now they can find that much more effective way to use pictures as a reminder uh, than just taking a picture with the camera and just dropping it in the photo roll. So again, it's, it's, the, it's the strategy of allowing that student to take a picture as an accommodation is a strong one. It, it's, it's, it's good. That's a good strategy. It's the finer points of how that strategy actually works in real life for that student to get them to be effective and independent. Uh, some of the other things we can do with Google Keep, again, if you're using this as a way to leave yourself notes and you are in the mobile device version, so I'm going to click backwards just for a second. So that picture on the right hand side is the screen from my phone in Google Keep. And if you'll notice along the bottom, it says take a note, and then it has a couple different options there, the check boxes, the draw, and then there's the microphone. And what I can do on my phone or my iPad or my tablet, whatever it is, is click that, use the microphone to dictate a note into Google Keep. And then what happens is when the note shows up in Google Keep, it shows up in two forms. It shows up, and now you're not going to hear the, the audio because I'm wearing headphones right now, but that bottom part of the note is my recording of my voice. That is the audio piece that I dictated into my phone. What happened was when it came into Google Keep, it also came up with the transcription. So now I have this speech to text that allows me to take my audio and it gives me the text on the other side. If you have someone who's using this as a way to do notes or start writing assignments or start writing task reminders for themselves, when they go and they get it out of the Google Keep, it is the text. Now the audio is there too, um, but more importantly, the text is there. And now they can use that text perhaps for some other task. So it gives that ability to do that and it shows up automatically. So the minute I go back to my Google Keep, that note with the audio and the transcription already exists there. So a powerful, powerful solution. Uh, how about this might be the greatest feature of the entire tool. Well, no, they're all pretty great. This one's great too, though. Um, if you have a picture that you've taken a picture of text, Google Keep will do the optical character recognition and pull the text out of the picture. And so what you end up with, if we go back to, here's a picture. I took a picture of the back cover of a book with my phone. That was all I did, just simple, quick note. Took a picture of it. When that picture shows up in Google Keep on my computer, so I go and I follow up and, and find it on my browser, if I click the three dots that say more, the one of the options that here says grab image text. And what the tool does, what Google Keep does, is it goes through that picture and it pulls out the text into the note. And so now what you have is quick access 
to that text. It has made the text of that book accessible because maybe I need that text to be digital in order for me to use text to speech to read it. Maybe I took a picture of something and I want to use that text within a writing task I need to complete. Now I can do that simply by taking a picture of it, pulling the text out, and then manipulating it in any way. And you can kind of get a sense from, from the, the text here. It's pretty good. Um, I've purposely used the back cover book that has a lot of kind of formatting things happening. So you'll notice that there's text that's in um, italics, there's regular text, there's bolded text, there's different fonts. Some of the formatting is different. Um, and it did a pretty decent job. I think I'd have to go back in and clean it up a little, but it is certainly getting someone further along with accessible text than just having to get someone to type that information out for them. So if you're thinking about a way to make text accessible to someone, this is a great way to do it. It will also do handwriting um, and pull the handwriting out and he says kind of questioningly. Um, it does, but it, it, you know, it really depends on the handwriting, quite honestly. Uh, I can tell you that I have never, with my handwriting, gotten success. Uh, I have seen people be quite successful with this. They have much better handwriting than me, um, and it does pull the text out. So again, if you have some notes that are handwritten, that might be an option to try within reason like this with someone's uh, handwriting. So as we kind of think about how you're going to manage this information, one of the things about Keep, uh, as, as you start leaving notes in it, these notes just start to pile up. So there's, you can organize them. So here I am in kind of my other notes. You'll notice I have two notes that are pinned to the top. That means that every time I write other notes, they're going to drop below these. These will be the first ones I see which would be helpful. So if you have um, an individual with a to-do list, you could perhaps have the to-do list right at the top so that, that always see that. But beyond your pin notes, every note you write is just going to drop into the bottom under others. Uh, so now you could organize these. So every time I wrote a note, if I wanted this book note to be first, I could drag it and move it there and make it first. Uh, I could certainly do that. But what I would encourage you instead is that rely on the labels. If you'll notice, I, I'm one of those who uses a lot of labels uh, in, in the notes that I put in here. And so those labels show up on the left-hand side that allow me to easily sort notes into a, into a topic area. So if I want to only find my history homework from that day in November, I can click history and that's the only note I see. Uh, and so that certainly helps manage that a bit uh, because once you start using this, if, if I was to show you the Google Keep that I use day to day, which I've decided I'm not going to show people anymore because it's a bit of a visual nightmare for some people, but it's perfect for me. Um, so I'm using this one instead. The, the one that I use every day has hundreds of notes in there that just continue to just scroll down and down a page. So for that, I have to use the labels. That's the way I can get around them. Uh, but don't forget, there's a search. Kind of our, our killer feature in all of our Google site tools, Drive especially, um, and Keep is your search. Do use the search button. And, and if when you get to search, there's so many options of things that I can search kinds of things, the types, of notes. Maybe it's just the recordings. There's the only one that was a recording and that pulled up. So if I knew I had used speech to text to generate the note, I could do that. Maybe it's only the ones with images in it and I can sort them in that way. Um, anything that has a reminder. So thinking about the search, for whether it's the type, whether it's through the labels, it's people that have shared it with me. So if I look and see only the notes that I have shared with myself, that might be a way. I'm working on projects with different people. I can just pull up the notes that have their name attached to them and be able to search that way. Or I can search through colors. So there's a lot of different ways within that search to navigate through and find the notes that I'm looking for. A couple other things as we get close to wrapping up our quick half hour flying through Google Keep. Um, you can use Keep in your other tools. So if, if you're not even a Google Keep user, you might have noticed in Google Docs, 
you have a toolbar along the right hand side, but if you're not a Google Keep user, you might have ignored it, that toolbar. But in fact, anything you use, this is good, you're going to actually get a chance to see my other Google Keep because it's the one attached to this dock. So if I click the Keep icon that is in this toolbar on the right, what you end up with is all of your Google Keep notes are here. So if you're pulling information down, trying to scroll to a point that it's not something that I care whether you say, there you go. Um, if you have notes that you've taken in Keep, but then you're going to use those notes to write some document or to work on some project, now I have them. And anything you've written in Keep, when you open it in the side of any of your other Google tools, so Docs or Slides or Sheets or Gmail, if you open in any of those, I have this note, I can drag this note into Google Docs and now that's shown up in my document. So the picture came as well as the text that was in that note. So I could take that kind of work that I've been working on and bring that into something else. I have uh, individuals I'm working with, students in classes, um, where they're finding pictures of things that they want to add into a slide presentation and they're making notes for themselves underneath it. And then when they open up slides, they simply drag, drag these things over and then add the notes that they need um, in order to remember what it is that they were using that picture for. So that's a quick way for them to do research. If students using Keep dictate notes to themselves on a project they're working on, then when the text shows up in the note, they simply drag it across into a Google Doc and complete the activity. So thinking about a different way to kind of tie these tools together is really important. Or do it the opposite way. If you're in a document and you realize you need to make a note for yourself to do later, open up Keep on the left hand side, uh, on the right hand side. Lost my left and right there. Um, if I open up Keep on the right hand side, I can take a note and it will say, what is your note title and the note? And then it's already tied to this Google Doc uh, that I can use in order to link my tools together. And then the final one that I, I like to show before I open it up for three minutes worth of questions um, is there is an extension for your Chrome browser called Save to Keep. If you use that extension, it will pop up in your toolbar. So right now along my toolbar here, I have all of my extensions running. And if I go to, if I go to the Zoom window, and my extensions are running along the top of my page is my save to keep. And then what I can do is I can click that. It knows I'm signed into two different things. It's confused. Uh, but what I can do, I'll go back to the picture then, is along the top, I had our website that I wanted to save in my Google Keep. If I click save to keep, it automatically makes a note and syncs it to my account. And then I can just take some notes off that web page and they're automatically in my Google Keep. So again, it will also save, it will save the website link as well. So now you have all that information in your notes. You can organize it, do whatever you're going to do with it as you move forward. So that's a powerful way to connect these two tools back together um, to continue this idea of saving and sharing notes in there. All right, we have two minutes. That was good. I, that was a fight. I was really a fight to do that in a half hour. Um, I think I could have talked about any of those things for a half hour, but questions, thoughts? Anybody? I can give you two minutes of your life back? Yes, I will. That's okay. When I think about um, using this, it, oh, somebody's putting a question in the chat. You could have actually turned your mic on. Oh, will the recording be available? Yes. So thank you, Jill. That we will. We are recording this. What we'll do is we will um, process the video and drop it up on our. Um, ATAC YouTube channel. Um, so you'll be able to see that uh, up there. Uh, thank you. That's a good question. Other thoughts before we wrap up? If you have other things you would like to have us cover in this kind of half hour kind of snapshot webinar, uh, we like this idea of doing these little short half hours, just enough information to kind of whet your appetite a little and get you to explore some of these other tools, um, we're happy to do them. So you know, feel free, uh, shoot me an email, uh, reach out on Twitter, whatever you'd like to do. And, and we will start 
scheduling some of these up uh, so that people can um, use some of these tools and see how others are using them in order to uh, be effective for someone. So my email is mmarotta, M-A-R-O-T-T-A, at drnj.org. The channel name, what is the YouTube channel name where it's going to be posted? Boy, that's such a great question. I don't know what our, our channel name. I believe it's ATAC of New Jersey is our channel. Um, in, in a second, I'll, I'll figure out if that's what it is. Yeah, and Jill would like to see real demos of implementation. Um, the, the picture of the student's history note is a really great example. Uh, that picture that Casey Bell uses too is another really good example uh, of students using that. And, and I think, Jill, just think about it creatively. What is that student struggling with? And, and Keep might give you an opportunity to help them with that because it's so flexible. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, but I love that idea that it follows them, it syncs together, their information is everywhere they log in, which is huge. So you don't have this worry that they're going to lose stuff. That's a great point. One quick plug. Uh, if you're on Twitter, I always plug uh, AT Chat. Join us every Wednesday night at 8 Eastern uh, where we talk about all things assistive technology. Uh, so hopefully you'll join us. Uh, there's some great conversation. We have some uh, two chats coming up to finish the year that are uh, entitled, the, the chat is titled some of our favorite things. So it'll be just kind of a sharing of a lot of tools and strategies for the next two weeks before the end of the year. That, I put up my contact information again uh, as we wrap up. Patty asked, are we posting the, the AT chats after the fact? And we are, Patty. Thank you. If you go to um, the link bit.ly slash ATChat19-20. That will get you every chat archive for the entire year. I will write it in the chat box here so you guys have it. Um, that will give you the link to everything. So when we're done each Wednesday night, we, we pull all of the tweets together into a, an archive and we place them up there. So you'll be able to go back and see every chat from the whole year. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. Two minutes over, but that was wonderful. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. I hope this was helpful for you. And if nothing else, I hope it forces you to open up Google Keep and explore it. So thanks. Good luck. Have a good rest of the day. Take care. Bye.